Hi there, this is CG Park. In this video, I'll be showing a time lapse of creating Ionami Ray using Blender, along with a brief explanation. This video will be divided into two parts. In the first part, we'll cover the modeling of the suit and the texturing process, and in the second part, we'll focus on the face. I used AI to translate the narration, so if you notice any odd points in the explanations, feel free to leave a comment. Let's get started. For the base model, I used a model from Character Creator. I decided to use this model to conduct some testing for this project. While there are some limitations, as long as you don't modify the topology or vertex numbers, you don't need to set anything up. You can edit the model in ZBrush and send it back to Character Creator, where it can be animated and posed directly. Now, setting aside the base model, I started by roughly sketching the suit using paint to draw basic lines for adjusting the proportions. I also created a rough model of the hair, though very loosely. At this stage, the key is not to worry about the quality. From here, I began working with Blender. I usually model in organic parts using polygon modeling in Blender, and I use ZBrush for sculpting organic parts. Afterward, I handled the retopology and topology cleanup back in Blender. This isn't necessarily the right way to do it, but it's the method that works best for me. Of course, it might be faster to do everything using just polygon models or sculpting, depending on your skills. On a side note, the reason I decided to create Ionami Ray this time was because I came across the news in June that Gainax had gone bankrupt. It's sad to see a company that produced so many masterpieces like Gurren Logan, Gunbuster, and Evangelion end up like this. After seeing this news, I felt like watching Evangelion again, and after watching it, I decided that Ionami Ray would be my next project. I know creating trendy characters might bring in more viewers, but I believe that prioritizing what I personally want to create is what will help me keep going on YouTube. Now, moving on to the retopology work, I used an add-on called Speed Retopo. I've briefly explained this in a video about Hachiwari, so if you're interested, feel free to check that video. Watching time-lapse videos like this can make you feel really sleepy, right? I'd be happy if you could stick with it till the end. At this point, I switched over to using Retopo Flow, which I had been curious about for a while. This was my first time using it, but I found it to be the most user-friendly Retopo tool I've tried so far. There are already many tutorial videos out there on how to use Retopo Flow, so there's plenty of information, and it's easy to pick up. I highly recommend it. From here, I started this somewhat tedious process of attaching the individual parts of the model together. 
This kind of work can make you feel even sleepier, right? I personally don't mind retopo work, as it feels like solving a puzzle. But how do you feel about it? Once the UV unwrapping was done, I moved on to sculpting the wrinkles. When sculpting, I focused on making the suit feel tight and snug. With that, the sculpting part was complete. For the textures, I didn't do anything particularly complicated. I just selected a texture that felt appropriate from the smart materials, changed the colors, and assigned them, so I don't have much to explain here. This concludes the video on the suit. Thank you for watching until the end. If this video was helpful to you, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. See you again in the second part of the video. Goodbye.